The Fratto brothers were Frank One Ear Fratto and his brother, Louis Cockeyed Fratto Louis Fratto, whose record of arrests dated back to 1929, when he was arrested in 1926 for stealing a $14 coat. On January 2, 1926, Louis Fratto was arrested for petty larceny, entered a plea of guilty, and received a sentence of one year which was probated or he was put on probation. On June 11, 1927, Fratto was arrested for violation of Section 2655, Chicago Municipal Code, disorderly conduct, found guilty, and paid a fine of $1 and costs. On February 24, 1929, he was arrested for misconduct and found guilty. On June 23, 1931, Louis Fratto, arrested for carrying a concealed weapons, was found guilty by the court. On October 30, 1932, he was arrested for disorderly conduct and discharged without prosecution. On March 29, 1933, Fratto, using the alias E. F. Martin, was arrested for defrauding an innkeeper and discharged. On May 14, 1933, Fratto was arrested for disorderly conduct. The case was discharged. On May 26, 1934, Fratto was arrested for vagrancy. Case null prost. On August 1, 1935, he was arrested on general principles. On July 24, 1936, he was picked up for investigation. On November 15, 1936, he was picked up in a general investigation. On March 14, 1936, Fratto was arrested for disorderly conduct. On October 3, 1939, Fratto was picked up for investigation. On August 13, 1939, Fratto was arrested in Racine, Wisconsin, on charge of being a material witness. On September 43, 1939, Fratto was arrested for investive purposes he rose through the Chicago rackets with the sponsorship of Charles Cherry Nose Geo, a man Fratto was later accused of murdering. Pulitzer Prize-winning reporter Clark Mollenhoff described Fratto as he was a pleasant fellow with a perpetual smile, a constant line of flattery, and an alert and observing eye. The slight deviation in his alignment that resulted in the nickname made him just a bit self-conscious about looking directly at you, but he managed to scrutinize you indirectly just as well. In 1932, the infamous detective Harry Lang, the guy who tried to kill Frank Nitti, arrested Louis Fratto, then 27, of 1813, Washburn Avenue, who claimed to be the secretary of the newly formed shakedown operation, the Chicago News Boys Union. Fratto and his business partner Ted Virgilio were arrested inside a bar at 2042 North Clark Street, accused of trying to shake down the owner. They were arrested a year later. By then, Virgilio and Fratto said they business agent and secretary and treasurer of the wardrobe check, washroom attendants, and doorman's union, another newly invented shakedown organization. Chief of Detectives Showmaker made the arrests. Virgilio and Fratto were held for two days for questioning in connection with the $300,000 robbery of a mail carrier and a guard at Clark and Adams Street in December of 1932. In 1939, Fratto replaced Charles Cherry Nose Geo as the mob boss of Iowa, making his headquarters in Des Moines. Strong family connections got him the job. The Frattos quickly went about the business of trying to corrupt the sheriff's office, the prosecutor's office, the courts, and the state's political arena. By 1942, Fratto was living in Demione under the name Lou Frappo. He was arrested that year in Iowa for attacking Moses Cohen and his wife with baseball bats. The Cohen ran a casino. With Fratto was John J. Nicholson and Philip Messi. Messi held a pistol on the couple while Nicholson worked them over with the baseball bat and Fratto supervised and his brother Frank waited outside the couple's home, where the beatings took place, as a lookout. In 1944, Frank one ear Fratto probably murdered Francesco Frank Agrusa Abate, a former leader of the so-called Green Ones, and may have been a capo in the St. Louis crime family. Frankie Fratto acted primarily as a bookie in Des Moines, and he was arrested on several occasions for delivering near-deadly beatings to other non-mob-connected bookies. In 1951, he was locked up for interstate theft of whiskey. In 1954, Louis Fratto, then better known by his alias Lefty Cockeye Farrell, still in Des Moines, was a suspect in the brazen murder of Charles Cherry Nose Geo and Frankie Diamond, ex Capone operatives. One story was that Geo had tried to reclaim his control over the rackets in Iowa. Another possible reason for Geo's murder was that he had quarreled with Joey Glimco over union dealings. At the time, Fratto, working out of his club the main liner, was close to Sam Battaglia and big dollar burglar John Donkey Ears Wolick, a Battaglia crew member. Fratto was also the Iowa distributor of Canadian ace beer owned in secret by Tony Accardo. The Fratto's contact with Chicago was through Gil Vlerio, a cousin to Felix Milwaukee Phil Alderigio. Supposedly, the Fratto's were also cousins to Alderigio. They were also related by marriage to Willie Potatoes Dodano and Albert Obi Forbata. 
An Iowa Lufrato was picked up for threatening and intimidation and had a restraining order placed on him. On May 14, 1940, the District Court of Polk County, Iowa, issued a bench warrant for his arrest for conspiracy. When called to testify before the Cape Heart Committee, he refused to answer most questions but wouldn't take the fifth because, as he said, I don't want to take the Fifth Amendment. It sounds like a commie. At the hearing, Frato said he didn't know any criminals and worked a steady job as a clerk for the Complete Home Remodeling Company in Des Moines in 1952 and 1953. When asked about the job at Complete Home Remodeling, Frato was evasive. A committee member asked, were you the top man in your office? No, Frato said. Who did you take orders from? Nobody then, how did you know what to do? We didn't do anything. Frato was declared in contempt and was taken into custody. August 1958, Frato was called before the McClellan Committee. He was a testy witness who identified himself as a labor relations advisor with the Teamsters Union. Otherwise, he took the fifth to virtually every question asked. By the 1960s, the Frattos were back in Chicago. January 12, 1964, when Paul Ricca chaired a meeting with Murray Humphreys, Tony Accardo, and Abi Frabata at the Jacques restaurant and agreed to replace Sam Giancana as boss, Frankie Fratto sat in on the meeting. In 1967, Louis Fratto, Nimrod Timmy Solomon, and Amher S. Lincoln, the father-in-law of murdered Alan Rosenberg, were indicted by a federal grand jury in connection with fraudulent loans made to a multi-million dollar Indiana aircraft manufacturer. Rosenberg, a 320-pound con man and scam operator, was murdered in March of 1967 by one of the two Fratto brothers, or both. Apparently, Rosenberg had threatened to kill cockeyed Louie, never a smart thing to do. Rosenberg was found riddled with bullets, his wrists handcuffed in a parked car. The fraud indictment started when the Air and Space Manufacturing Company of Muncie was granted a $7 million deal with a Canadian corporation for the manufacture of the Umbau gyroplane. Fratto met with the company president, Fred G. Amick and offered to arrange for a $250,000 loan to the company so it could fulfill its contract with the Canadian company. The loan would cost the company 7% interest annually. Amick agreed and accepted the loan. The mobsters arranged terms of the loan under which payment was to be made to the firm in installments, the first of which was to total $52,500, but they never intended to complete the loan. Instead, a counterfeit cashier's check was prepared and delivered to North Vernon. Amick was to cash the $52,500 check and turn $17,500 of the amount back to the hoods. Louis Cockeyed Louis Fratto died at age 60 in the cancer facility of the University of Wisconsin at Madison on November 25, 1967, and never went to court over the counterfeit check scam. Fratto's family insisted that he wasn't a gangster, but rather a philanthropist who operated of a drive-in restaurant. Lou Fratto's son Frank Farrell was a passenger with Rocky Marciano on the 1969 Cessna crash which killed them and the pilot. Starstruck Frankie Fratto was delighted to be in the company of celebrities, singing sensations, champion boxers, and, if there was a photo op in, with big-named gangsters from across the U.S. He counted the mobbed-up singer Vic Damone and Sammy Davis Jr. and Jimmy Durante as his closest friends. A detective said of him it was not uncommon for him to be seen on a police surveillance the same night shaking hands with a celebrity and a guy like syndicate kingpin Tony Accardo. He got around. Frankie detested his name half ear and one ear Frankie, it embarrassed him, and for years, even in the 1940s and 50s, he wore his hair long to cover the defective ear. In 1970, the Chicago Crime Commission identified Frado as a major loan shark in Chicago. Frank E. Frado died of cancer in 1996 at age 81. Jeffrey and Stephanie Geo.